the, the story of this friend that I trained with goes kind of like shit afterwards, but basically we fell out and, and we like he wasn't a very like good person or a loyal man. But before he betrayed me and started speaking to my ex-girlfriend, this guy that I trained with for like a year straight was fucking amazing. Imagine like you, it's a weird way to introduce someone. But basically, like I trained with this guy in the gym for about a year, basically every single day. And it was so routine that like I would wake up, I would work at 8 a.m. I'd eat a big pre-workout meal and he'd, he'd be outside. I'd hop in the car, we're like, you know, laughing and, and singing loudly and stuff. Get to the gym, we were lifting heavy weights, spotting each other. We knew what weight we'd both use and our like our strength started to match, which meant that it was so like simple to, you know, share the barbell together. And when you have that guy who knows how much weight you can lift, who's screaming at you, that's very powerful. Like it, it's not only is it psychologically just good for you because, you know, you've got someone who's watching you for accountability, someone who's hyping you up, but also just for genuine, just physical safety. Because with a lot of the movements that you're going to do in the gym, it's so much safer if you feel like you've got someone who's spotting you with a lot of like pressing exercises. So I found that if I'm bench pressing and I'm particularly going for lower reps, my weight is that I can use is so much lower unless if I actually have a spot, like you'd assume whether you have a spot or not, your strength in the gym is the same. It's just, it's weird because it's like, well, once you become experienced in the gym, you know that there's a certain weight that you won't attempt at like bench press unless there's someone stood behind you who could save you in cases you mess up. Because e even when you do fail a, a bench press set, it's not like life or death. You can without the, the clips on the barbell. You can't just, you know, like throw the barbell to the side. You can do that, but it, it's still quite scary to do that. It's quite like loud in the gym. You're disrupting everyone. You might drop the weight on someone's foot. You don't actually want to have to fail like a bench press. And if you've got someone stood behind you, it's like another 10% of your strength just gets activated because you're not scared anymore. That fear will limit your strength growth and your muscle growth a lot more than you realize. And that's not even the biggest benefit of having a workout partner. The biggest benefit and like the really the biggest lesson that I wanted to give you in this, make it fun. I am here today, 10 years later from that moment that I told you about where I first started weightlifting, 10 years later, and I still love working out. I would not be here today with the muscle that I've built and the physique that I've sculpted if I didn't enjoy it all this time. This is one of the things that I have done so amazingly. I'm not the strongest in the gym. I'm not the most jacked, but I have made the, the workouts so incredibly fun that someone like me 10 years later is still consistently going. I'm saying like someone like me because naturally I have a tendency to like start and quit things. I have a tendency, like my normal life was me just being like a video gamer, a loser. And here I am 10 years later with like a jacked muscular physique, which is so odd for how I lived most of my life because this is like a really disciplined act when I wasn't a disciplined kid. I'm only here here because I routinely just make working out really fun for me. Having a workout partner makes it really fun, but I, I even have amazing times when I go to the gym by myself because I just do little things that add to the fun. So for example, I'll listen to the kind of songs that really hype me up. I'll do the exact workout, which I find the most fun, not the one that's going to maximize the muscle or the fat loss the most. I do the one which I'm going to find the most fun, which means that like if I showed my workout routine to the internet, I'm sure that there'll be a bunch of like bodybuilders who will say, oh, this isn't very optimal. You know, you could try it like this. You should do this. But the difference is like, I'm still here consistent because I do the kind of workout routine that I find really fun. I really like just barbell exercises. I like just kind of like seeing the weight go up just because it's like a game. But this is like, this changes. So just five years ago, I really liked doing a bunch of isolation exercises and getting like a massive pump and every workout and, and just training arms like every day. I enjoyed that. So I only really train in ways that I enjoy and I'm just build the kind of physique that I deserve from that, which is not the most muscular. But even then, if you saw pictures of me, maybe my editor can throw some up. Like I've built a very respectful physique as a lifetime natural who hasn't had amazing genetics, like not even good genetics to start with. I had basically like the worst kind of genetics, which is like brown, skinny, fat, like Pakistani guy, Indian, like uh, Indian, Pakistani guys. We know this is like our genetics are just, there's no like brown guy who's just genetically muscular. It's just never happened in the world before. There's a bunch of black guys who were just born with fucking muscle. A bunch of white guys who were just born with muscle. No Indian or Pakistani guy has ever just been born with like a nice like lean physique. We've all like we just start as like a fucking copy of each other, which is like a, a weird fat bloated stomach, but like weirdly skinny arms and like a hairy chest. And so here I am with a physique that actually is the exact opposite of that, where my stomach is, is tight and flat, where my chest is, is muscular, where my arms are thick. It's been an amazing journey. And most of all, it's been fun 
through it all. So just like before I started recording this video, I just said to my girl who, you know, we're staying together right now in this beautiful Airbnb. And she just went to the, the grocery store for us to go get like a bunch of like food and pre-workout stuff. Like we got fruit and everything. And I'm like, I can't even explain to you like how, how grateful and excited I felt just before I pressed record thinking, this is my life. I'm in this beautiful place in Scotland. I'm, we're about to go view homes that we want to buy and to start our family. And my woman's just went out to like, to the grocery store to buy us like basically like pre-workout like the pre-workout meal and we're gonna go to the gym straight after this like i'm living like the the perfect day every day i, I absolutely love my life and i love the schedule that i've I've the routine that I've built and the gym has been a huge part of that. So I know that right now you probably really want to maximize your muscle mass and you really want to burn as many calories as possible. And you've got these big goals, which are awesome. But I want to tell you that the best advice that I could give you after 10 years of being in this space is to really just think to yourself that you want to create like your perfect life, your perfect day. And you want to have like the gym being a big part of that. You want it to be this thing that you still want, like you love it being in your day, even 10 years from now, even 20 years from now, when you've got multiple children and you've got like, some successful business, you still want it to be a super fun part of your day. Because if you're only going to the gym just for the muscle gain, at some point, 10, 20 years from now, I'm going to be honest, you, you'll probably feel a little bit too mature for that. Right now, when you're young, it's like the muscle gain means a lot because you're going to get, you know, you'll attract more girls, you'll get more respect. 20 years from now, when you've like, developed yourself spiritually so much more and you're so much more certain of yourself, you're going to have a lot less desire to be like 10% body fat. Unless if you love it, if you create this gym lifestyle, which you don't love, it'll be very hard to maintain that when other priorities start coming up, when children come up and maybe like financial problems come up every now and then. But when you really love your gym workout, when you love the lifestyle that it puts you on, when the, the thought of like eating a pre-workout meal and going to the gym with your girl, it seems like so fun to you. You'll do it no matter what, even when you're traveling, even when you've just had a child. That's what I hope for you. I know that if you just want to race for the gains, I totally understand because I've done that, but you probably probably want to maintain those gains for the rest of your life. And the number one way you're going to do that is to always keep it fun and enjoyable.